Well folks, what's happening? Welcome to episode 12 of Mentality Monsters. Today is kind of a different one. It's one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. This person, I've worked with him in the past. I've seen the journey that he's been on and I think it's very inspirational and we can all kind of relate to it. He speaks about real life matters, which majority of people all over North and South of Ireland and even the UK have all been affected by it at one stage or another. He's an absolute gentleman and he's starting to get really recognised for his talents. He's done art for a lot of celebrities. He is doing artwork for Conor McGregor, Michael Conlon. He's done work for Casper Waltz, um, the artist. Uh, not the actual artist, but a music artist. And then he's done a lot for sports stars all around the world. And he's got a lot of big things coming up as well. So thank you for joining me. This is the Ram Finney story. Well folks, what's happening? Welcome to Mentality Monsters episode 11 and today's guest is Mr. Ran Feeney. Ran, cheers for coming on bro. No worries. I appreciate it. Thank you. Long time since fucking today's a Converges and oh, on start. the call floor. <laughs> so I first met Ran, we were we worked on the same floor in Converges, Concentrics. I'd say most of Belfast has probably worked, worked there at like one stage or another. Uh -huh. But I'd say our wee floor isn't doing too bad now. No, no. We've got I saw contact with half of them, actually. Ah, uh, man, all headers. you got Dermy doing his UFC or MMA, and then yeah. you've got fucking We Ran around. Spence. Was he in there, really? Yeah, We Ran Spence was. He was, was in my team, caught tripping. Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know he worked on the Aye, uh, so he was there <laughs> as well. So our floor was actually. is doing all, like, all right now. Yeah, one won the on Praise Guy as well, so. Who? Paul Seward. Did he? Uh, I, I he, he won like <laughs> 80 grand or something like that there. Yeah. Lucky bastard. But bro, usually with this year, um, we just jump in, kind of like, like James English. Just tell us exactly where you come from, where it all started. Yeah. So now. Far away. Um, from Crumlin. Family are from Belfast. And I don't know, I'd, I'd done art in school and stuff. And around, what was it? Two weeks in the upper sixth, I was told to leave the class because they said it wasn't good enough and I wouldn't get a U. I had to go straight out. Sat in a study hall all day and had to change my A-level subjects for a year. Didn't lift a pen again or a paintbrush. And then when I was 19, my best friend took his own life. And when I was getting seen to like mental health nurses and stuff like that, they told me to write down all my feelings. Yeah. I was like, okay. And I kept it up for about a year and it just got worse. And then one nurse came in with a sketchbook and a pencil and just let me draw and everything just exploded out. Did you say in any of the sessions or anything that you used to do art? No. No? No. So it was just, it was basically like another method of like trying to test and, and yeah. see what would help? I, I think I mentioned the done it in school, but I just, when the, when the teacher and principal just told me to leave, I was kind of like, I just resented it and put it in the back yeah. of my head so much, but yeah. Were you <laughs> a quack kid? I, up until maybe the last year, I think when they kicked me out of art, I kind of like came out of my shell more. Yeah. Because there's more anger coming out than... Did you use art to exp like because people say express themselves or release some of their energy or their stress through the like I say boxing MMA football would that have been your kind of release yeah doing art it was yeah and obviously I played Gaelic and football my whole life I've played in like England and stuff for a bit and my family are from America yeah so we played football and stuff in America and it, it was great it was but when I got injured in England I needed a a release yeah and obviously i couldn't move so art became that release again but it was years till i found that again so whereabouts in america virginia family virginia mm -hmm. oh damn and oh, damn. So they're actually not related to us like but um it's my granny's best friend's family yeah they were just so but, close to us and we would have went over eight nine weeks every summer and you make friends there and they play for a couple of teams and stuff there and it was just it was great are you still in contact with oh, yeah. any of them oh, oh, yeah. yeah loads of mates and all like uh, there's two guys actually played with us in the nfl and stuff now no way, serious. So, yeah, yeah, no, so they're all doing well, and then no lot of like softball players and stuff, and our cousin Alex. 
in the softball, so we're capable of like our friends as well. Lethal. See yeah. out in America, was there like any stupid American questions you would get asked? Because there's definitely about Ireland. Aye, uh, there's definitely something. I that's think the, the the main question was why do we talk so fast? I hear. <laughs> see, to be fair, I get that as well. Like even now, uh, I was um, I was speaking to a doctor mm-hmm. a few days ago, and I think she was from Poland or something, uh-huh. and she was like, whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. <laughs> I was like. I'm really sorry about the same love. I'm yeah. really, really sorry. It's just fun speaking think, a million um, times an hour. One of the best days I had over there, I've never told you a story, but um, I had an uncle called Chip, and he owned like a landscaping business. And I was 16, and he, like, I didn't do much because like, the weather was so hot, you could only work from like 11 to 3 was like the peak of the sun. Yeah. So he would have done it really early in the morning or late at night. He used to make me throw like stones and stuff in people's like driveways or, you know, like clean up their garden. And he says, I'm going to bring you to some cool house today. And it was this family, just this man and woman. And when we were there throwing like the stones over, um, it turns out to be Pharrell Williams, mum and dad. And they're saying how fast I spoke and all. I couldn't <laughs> believe me, but I can believe it was Pharrell's mum and dad. I was like, what? It's insane. And did you get to see him? No. Uh-huh. No, he wasn't there. I don't think he lives there. But his mum and dad still live in Virginia. Well, here, at least it's a story. Like, going I know, it's mad. People, no one would believe you. They're like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then, see, when you were younger, mm-hmm. because obviously we we're born in a pretty mad society and there's a lot of troubles in the well troubles in itself but there's a lot of conflict and like and things like that when you were younger were you ever affected by even just like because you're from crumlin but you have family in west belfast there's mm. certain traditions and and things like that there and influences were you ever, like ever like influenced by anything um external like in trouble sense um like say because usually you'd hear lads that would get jumped and all because they're being, say, like a Catholic or a Protestant yeah. or just be in trouble with the police. Um, were you ever involved in anything Not like really. that? Not really. Crumman's kind of like a different community, like, do you know what I mean? Um, I, I do you have a good Tesco? Do we have a good Tesco? Yeah, or I, we do? Well, it's, like all, I, it's all right. Like, <laughs> I, have, like I haven't been up there in a few years. That's all you, right. There's nothing. Do, like, the only thing in Crumlin is Crumlin United Football, Aldergrove. Gaelic and Tesco there's nothing else in Crumlin like <laughs> Aye, the football team's doing all different they're themselves class. now like yeah, yeah no, they're class like, like Andy Mooney and stuff I think he still plays for Crumlin like Nathan Waters are unbelievable oh, players, like, and Pierce Nall's up on there as well Pierce. yes or uh, McConnell he's he's he was the vice cat. he is the vice captain, but he's injured now like he got fucking he done his ACL there wasn't it ACL Achilles mm-hmm. the start of the season there um, but I they seem to be doing well now class hard yeah. playing players as well so they must have a wee, like a wee bit of dosh about them oh, mate, they're just yeah, I think it's some somewhere like 15, 20 quid a game, I think. Or a week. Uh, but, Fuck yeah. here, you take it, like, especially yeah, like, at that level. Like, you there's take so it, much talent from, like, um, Crumlin, like Andy and Nathan, as I said, and obviously Paul Smith, you know, plays for QPR uh, and stuff now. He came from Crumlin, and there's a guy, Mark McKee, he played for Stevenage. Mark, ah, uh, yes, I think, uh, from, yeah. I think he's originally from the north, isn't he? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, sure, uh, I know Mark. I haven't seen Mark in ages, like, but yeah. uh, I used to drink with him, like. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 all, he's a big dude. Uh, Mark is unbelievable football, like. I haven't seen him in years either. Like, but he was at Clinville there for a while. I think. He was, yeah, yeah. I don't know where he is. Swifts, right? I think with St James Swifts. Is it? I uh, hear yeah. so they're playing players and all now as well. Arn Martin as well. He was good for Crumlin. Martin who? You know Arn Martin? No. Oh, Arn Martin. Mm-hmm. No, I thought you said Arn Martin. Arn Martin. I was like, <laughs> I was like who, who the fuck's that there? But um, when you were say younger, just running about the likes of Crumlin, like what would you have got up to yourself? Um, uh, literally football and Gaelic. Um, football and Gaelic, and then there's a lot of like countryside, obviously. So you would have like made friends like farmers whose mums and dads are like jet skis and quads <laughs> that you could have went out with and you know we live close enough to the lock yeah so, you know most summers you would have been there like swimming and stuff and just run about the country like proper cultures like <laughs> I used to go up when I was younger like I used to go up because my dad's mate lived up there and I used to know uh, in Glen Avey mm-hmm. and I used to go up and uh, Put him in the likes of, do you know Andy Donnelly? I know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. I like I used to go out with the likes of Andy Donnelly. Uh-huh. I know. I used to go up and stay in his house for like two or three weeks in the summer. Yeah. Um, and then you see, he is Glen Avey, isn't he? Andy, aye, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great lad as well. Like, yeah, he is. I, would, I wouldn't be close to him, like, but I don't know, like Jordan Lawler and stuff would be his mate. Ah, uh, he's Jordan. To, he used to work in Concentrics. Yes, yeah, so he did. Yeah, I actually uh, seen him not too long ago. No, who no, hasn't worked in Concentrics? Exactly. Uh, like <laughs> but um, when you were growing up, it was just art. You're solely your sole thing that you would do in terms of hobbies or was there like gaming or anything that got there? I, n- I never gamed. Never Literally got, No, I always used my brother's old Xbox when he got my first PS5, I think like a year ago, it was my first console I ever owned and I still don't touch it. But um, no, growing up, it just football and Gaelic and messed about with mates. I never drank or done drugs or anything like, still don't drink. Uh, fuck yeah, that's class to be no. fair. That so, is good. But yeah, no, I would have done art like in the weekends and stuff, but when I got kicked out in A-level to be told it wasn't good enough, I've, 
just give it up. How do you think that there impacted you at the time in terms of your belief in yourself? Uh, confidence went down the drain because like when you're told you're not good at something you absolutely love, you kind of be like, what do you do? And you, you put all like that emotion you can't get out through art. You push it down inside of you and you know it just, just brings out a different person. So I went down a couple of bad paths and stuff, but... Do you think it, um, it tested your character as a person in yeah. terms of not drinking and not doing drugs or anything? Was there ever a temptation there? There was, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a time it was like with some bad people, like <laughs> we've got as bad people, but like um, with a press you to do drugs and drink, but I never get in. Never get in. It's not just to cover up for camera or anything. Just, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, just don't, like I've been in Amsterdam and smoked a wee bit, like, you know, like, yeah. but nothing like coke or nothing, like absolutely nothing. Oh, like, yeah, like all the hard nothing, stuff. Nothing. And then what did you kind of do with yourself? See, once you were told that there, what was the next step? Because... I was, well, I'll ask you this here first before I go on to that other question. What age was it that you started to think to yourself that you could possibly do this as a career? Um, it was lockdown, so whatever. I would say lockdown. 21, I think. 21, 20, so 20, this 20, would have been after. Yeah. I've been told. So at that stage, what were you actually wanting to pursue? In art? No, just, just in, like, like in your life. Oh, well, I, was, I went to I was teaching because I went to St Mary's University and well I was actually in Stromulus first and then left because I wanted to play Gaelic in Samaria's because they were a great Gaelic team and I wanted to be a teacher because I didn't want a child to feel the way that I felt was being told not to do something left me in such a bad state I was like I'm going to be a teacher and never ever put a child down and went on to teaching got injured in football didn't work out and just thought it wasn't for me anymore and the art kind of just took off Have you been asked at all to go back to uh... teaching? like your old school St Mary's uh, at all or has anybody like contacted you from the school um, just regarding of like, and I uh, not in terms of art no I've been asked me to come out and help for like you know PE days and stuff like that but not, nothing for art that's mad like I know especially for what you're doing now like in terms of your popularity and stuff I'd say they've definitely seen there is there's, there's teachers now. that have like retired and stuff have spoke to me about it and says you should go up but I, I don't think it would no uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think it would go back <laughs> why not I, the guy ain't gonna be the proper like f like fuck you yeah you probably know? would be <laughs> I wonder if the art teachers are all still there but I just I don't know I don't think they realise how much it impacted me they're like how do you um, think it did impact you mentally at that stage it's terrible like the thought of suicide and all never ran through my head until all that suppressed emotion came so yeah it's left me a really really dark place in my life and I'm just happy to be out of it now like I'm still struggling yeah. do you know what I mean but everyone from Belfast struggles and I like, think we were talking about how many people we know have taken their life and everyone's yeah. been impacted by suicide yeah. so. and then as well like how did you handle it or what methods did you use to actually Try to get yourself out, like out of that their situation or out of that their mindset. That's uh, more more about setting up a routine every day, being active. Um, in terms of art, setting myself and need to do at least one or two paintings a week. Yeah. Um, setting up the business was tough, but I knew if I kept myself occupied, it would keep all them dark thoughts and suicide thoughts down deep, and eventually it would fade away. And it did. So yeah, I just I just thought maybe reaching out to a couple of, like celebrities now would make the dream become more reality yeah and here it looks like it now like at, well at the minute looking from the outside I know on the inside it's a lot fucking it's a lot different the reality of it all but um have you ever got any say backlash at all for art for your art from well, anyone when I painted Luke Littler like obviously it blew up because it's Luke Littler yeah and I had two people tell me to go kill myself because no <laughs> they said it was so bad I was like okay <laughs> but obviously he's he started school if he's, I, he like, bought it he, so yeah. do you know what I mean he hasn't got it yet so look I will send it out don't worry <laughs> <laughs> just people are getting prints made of the art so it's been a bit of a delay but yeah a lot of people just didn't like it said it didn't look like him and stuff and I was like okay but see the way uh, he's throwing a rocket in it, is yeah, it? yeah a nuke a nuke is See the song that Ben Williams done? Birds in the Sky? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's got the Luke Littler kind yeah, of version. Yeah, Ben done a, a, what do you call it, a remix of uh, like uh, Darts in the Sky. Darts in the Sky? I think Luke came out there, I'm not too sure, but he did have done one. Uh, I, no, I thought it was the Nuke, like I thought that's like what that was, yeah. because that their song, but obviously not. It's I, just, I, it's I, I, I didn't know that Luke would actually even, I didn't, never thought I'd meet Luke, it was six days after I painted it. I was sitting with Luke talking to him but um, his mum and his dad and his sister and his girlfriend all I've seen it on Instagram and they made the connection and Luke started to follow me and talk to me he says yeah meet me in the hotel and we'll come in so what's he like as a person he's really dead on he's, 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 he's quite a small lad 
But he is only seventeen. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, but I, I thought he looks bigger in pictures, you know. But um, yeah, he's he's a good, nice guy, like nice guy. And what happened to him? I heard there was something with his hand that happened. In he was walking out, was he? And did some <laughs> fan try to attack him? Or uh, he's, he's like, because when I was watching it the morning after, he was like walking out doing his ring, his ring walk, <laughs> his walk to the the stage and I think someone tried to get grab his hand said he was injured but I think he's still out and injured I'm not too sure if he's injured now and again darts probably is one of the only sports if you have a hand like injury, injury you're, you're snickered like you're, <laughs> you are completely out because he's because he, he's, he's playing Luke's playing like a pro clubs thing with like angry gin seen and, that yeah. what's called that the Gurf and Turf Gurf and Turf Gurf and Turf it looks, it looks fun like doesn't it oh it does look good. and all's in it but um yeah no but the, it looks a great guy have you seen your man um Heinz Benz Oh, he's, um, he's, he's from, from here, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah, from yeah. Derry. His TikTok photos, like, have you seen his TikTok photos? Uh, it's like when he appeared with a big arse. Uh, he's <laughs> mad, like he, like, he went out. He ended up, I don't know how, he ended up with Sky Bree. <gasps> did he? Aye, uh, he went know. out with Sky Bree. No, like, him and I his missus went over yet. to Sky Bree <laughs> in, like, LA. Mm. And they ended up fucking... Like going out to Disneyland and all. You need to get him on the podcast, man. He's so oh, funny. Man. Like I do remember that actually. It was a while back. I was like, well, how the fuck did this connection, like from him being like on fucking like Twitch and all that there, bikes, the Sky Bree. But it's, see, see connections people from here are making across the world. Like I don't know, there's a great artist out there called Jossie Pop. Jonathan, have you heard of him? No. Nah. I have him on Instagram. I'm gonna share him later. But he done a mural of Jared Butler, and banger. Yeah. Jared came over. He was already in. Uh, around that area but he came to Bomb Bridge to see the mural and he like that's just amazing like, so like the con- art's getting bigger in Belfast and the connections people from here are making is just it seems to be in everything really so you've got the likes of art and yourself and then you've got the music industry in terms of fucking like um, like Casper Waltz and stuff like that there and then you've got Symmetric Shugs mm-hmm. all in boys um, and then it just seems to be taking over like, like here is starting to become more popular for people that actually come over and showcase stuff as well mm-hmm. which is fucking class like, and then Frank Lampard was in Belfast last night or something was he? Yeah. Oh, his, his wife's from is here from here yeah yeah what's his wife called again? Does she? Does she? Does she? there you go fuck <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> love him to Belfast <laughs> well if it gets robbed <coughs> well now I know where she lives if it gets robbed the 15 <laughs> for the Frank record here. it was not me <laughs> <laughs> but um we'll move on here just to like Covid and things like that there mm. so Actually, nah, nah, we'll go to COVID after the um, moving abroad, the teaching uh-huh. and all, because we're nearly fucking, I went over that. Um, so you end up going to England, was it, to become a teacher? Yeah. And what, how did that like, come about? Um, why didn't you stay here? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a twin. I'm my twin sister, she moved to do teaching in England. And yeah. We were going to the same place. We both got in the RPGCEs and... We have the R like Catholic certificate with it because when you come back, you if you want to teach in a Catholic school, you have to do a Catholic cert. Uh, do you know what? No, no, that's probably no. like Fenian. It's, it's like an eight, yeah, stuff like it. It's like, like eight hundred quid as well. But we got in a course where we didn't have to pay it, and it was a part of our course. So yeah, very lucky. Eight hundred quid. Um, and who's it going to? The Catholic Church, is it? I'm guessing. Nah, I have a clue. Like it's going to someone anyway. There like, are. <laughs> probably, <laughs> sake. It's probably going to the universities. But um, when we were over there, um, my idea was to stay there and just teach well finish the PGC teach and then try and do a master's in education and then I'll be like okay I'm very qualified to come back home yeah because trying to get a teaching job back home is like I don't know if you know about statistics or anything like but I, I spoke to people here 11 12 years still sub teaching subs and if you want to get a permanent job to then have a house it becomes a bit of an issue yeah like a lot of my mates are like working two jobs with teaching because sometimes they're teaching for six weeks and then they're not teaching for like three months yeah. and I was like do I, do I really want that and don't get me wrong, teaching's a great job if you can get into it. It's just, it, it's, there's not enough space here. Yeah. So that's why I moved to England. But Where was it in England you went? Carlisle. Carlisle. So there's nothing really, it's like an hour from Scotland on the train, like, but there's nothing in Carlisle. Me in the Royal Navy. But, or, and what is it? I was born in Carlisle or something. Yeah. Me in the Royal Navy. <laughs> Made in the Royal Navy. I went over a lot of, my house wasn't too, it was like a 10 minute walk from Carlisle United. So I think the f- one of the second days we're playing Everton's under 21s. Tickets were like, like 20 quid. So it was always Fuck at the games no and stuff. Way. Yeah. 20 quid? Yeah. That's mad. Like Dortmund games are like 12 euro and shit like that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I like, <laughs> And Clinville's like 15 quid. And you're getting to watch Joe de Gaulle. Yeah. Uh, I know where I'm going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how did you fare out there? Like how was student life for you? It was tough. Like I mean, I, I had a nice house and stuff, but I, I kind of chose to go to PGC. 
think two, not even two weeks before I left. It's kind of like an impulse decision, but it was like, if I don't do it now, I never will. What was the other option? Like, was there an option? Where was I working? Um, I was in civil service. civil service. I was good in civil service. I had like two or three promotions since I was there, but I just thought, no, I don't want to be here all my life, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of done an impulse decision in Carlisle, so basically went over no money. Just um, went over, just fucking winged it, basically. I did, yeah. And, you know, I'll uh, be honest, like England was probably the worst experience of my life. It was just the life over there was for me and yes my, s- my sister and stuff was there like but not having your friends or anything was really, really tough was there much from over here or much from scotland or i know there like was there? yeah no there was i mean i mean majority of them are obviously english like uh, that you'd be messing about with but um yeah there was there was a lot from like down south we're over because every everyone's trying to be a teacher yeah and the dude is that the main place to go for teaching carlisle carlisle it would be that or well It'd be one of them, anyway. I know Liverpool's really popular, and looking back, I probably should have went to Liverpool because everyone's in Liverpool. Yeah, like, I know so many people in Liverpool, and obviously there's a lot more to do in Liverpool than there. The football's a lot better as well oh, instead of watching Carlisle. Yeah, like, Liverpool, like you, Liverpool man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it's been a, <laughs> since that uh, <coughs> FA Cup match on some parties. It's been a dark, dark, dark time. day. Yeah, man. Kicked out the other night. You just can't see, like, like, see now when we're on the attack. Mm-hmm. You just can't see where the goals are going to come from. No. Like, and see even like, like Atlanta were pressing mm-hmm. how high they were pressing in the eightieth minute, and we we're like, we're supposed to be chasing this here game, score two goals, and they're literally all over us here. I my my uh, friends are all like Liverpool men and stuff. Like, I actually would love to go to a game. Just to see when I got me United yeah. man, like, but I would love to like go to Anfield and experience it because like yeah. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're having the worst time to me at the moment. I just I, I know people was like worked over in like Anfield and stuff, and it just looks amazing. Like yeah, I, I'm so, United uh, through and through, like but it, like I like the experience of their pitches and stuff. Like, have you ever been in contact with your man? Because I know he's a big I'm United man. Um, nasty. Do no. you know him? He's does all the food stuff down in Dublin. He's nasty. got his own like nasty. Is he from Dublin? Yeah, yeah, he's a bold man, but he does all that there. Pure carnage. He makes everything in a fucking a toasty. No. I'll show you him when we hit a break here. He's no. fucking. He's toasty, mad. No, no. But you need to comment it on his videos and all. Everything. Yeah, he, but he has his own kebab in Abra Kebabra. Right. Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay and all that. So he's got his own kebab, but he brought the kebab from Abra Kebabra over to Old Trafford. And then I'll show you the video after I share it's fucking mental. Yeah. But it's just weird as well. I've never heard of him. I probably know his face. Like. Aye, but um, when you were in Carlisle as well, did you ever get any issues with being from here? I did, like when I was playing football and stuff over there, before I had like the training gear, I would have wore like my Gaelic shorts. I got like you know, some lads taking a piss being like, oh, you can't wear that here. And you're kind of yeah. like, why? Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's England, it's a bit yeah. different. But there's a lot of lads from Scotland all were like commented on my Gaelic gear and stuff like, but... Like good and bad, majority bad. Like that's just bad. being honest. Yeah. Well, like, but um, other than that, not really. Like, but it made you kind of like want to cover up. Like, like when I wore like a lot of Gaelic shirts as I do. Like, you, you kind of want to cover it up. And you can't be wear yourself. It. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I love like wearing Gaelic shorts. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're just ideal for training them. Yeah. But I'm um, having to like say to myself, oh, I can't wear these to training. Going to get pissed taken out of me again, or feel like someone's gonna say something. Yeah. And then what would have been the work? worst experience out there in England um, well when I got injured the principal of the university told me as a risk factor you can't teach here anymore so when I had to move home I lost everything I ever owned in my house because I couldn't pay my landlord in England and I couldn't pay you know for rent and stuff here so he took everything I ever owned and sold it to the highest bidder and no the storage auction was everything my best friend when he died he was given a watch when he, he was adopted in this family yeah. when he died his, his mum and dad gave me the watch and the watch was in the house and I just said literally take everything you want I just want the watch he just said no so everything was packed up in a bag and put the storage locker and sold the house better and I haven't heard from him since because he was asking for too much money and like yeah. too short a time and I just didn't have it he's probably <coughs> thinking right I can get you out and then there's, there's probably fucking five or six like people in the works who are wanting to get a house as well there yeah. so we can just charge as much as you want and I, I understand too like when I it was a last minute decision for me to move over but like he said I didn't have to pay a deposit now but then when I got injured I was like well I can't give you a deposit and I can't give you your rent on top of that too so he just uh, took a decision and says okay he gathered everything I've ever owned in my life came home 
back to crumbling and the only thing in my room was a bed like not even like drawers or nothing like bed. not a boxers not socks nothing and i couldn't work so it took me ages even to get other bits of clothes do you know where he's like he lives now no no nah. <laughs> no if i was you yeah, i'd get your own expendables team sean mccomb paul hughes <laughs> Frank mcgregor, Dane, mcgregor Nick the Callan. He, like just to, go out to be fair like my dad went over to england to you know, i think it was like collecting my sister or something for christmas and he went over trying to sort things out but the money he was asking for in that frame of time was criminal I, I could do it and that was it and like I wish I could pay him you know sooner but yeah. I, I was just a student making an impulse decision so for everyone watching are you able to tell us what your injury was like what happened to you yeah I got well, the whole thing it was my left ankle I got shattered it took all the ligaments were completely damaged inside and outside the ankle and my foot was almost rotated 180 degrees so I've sent you a photo it's, of it like yeah yeah we'll throw the photo just in just over it did. us talking here but when I was there they had to like, like there was a nurse in the pitch cut out like my socks and all because my foot swelled up so much they had to like cut my boots and stuff so it was it was horrible and it took me I had to learn how to like walk again and stuff and I didn't think I would need to but it affected my calf yeah so the muscle was so weak and I had to go to physio and learn how to like find my it's a proprioception I think it is it's called but um, I had to learn how to like balance again and walk again. It's still swollen now. Like it's really impacted yeah. me. But it was seventy eight kilo the day I got injured. I was in. I think it was just first of October, and I think by that May it was one hundred and twenty two kilo. Because I wasn't training. Yeah. I couldn't play sport, and it was just a really depressing time in my life. And I'm still fighting weight now. Anyway, <laughs> like. But uh, again, yeah, just doing what I'm doing. So, bro, can you describe to me the moment you realised the severity of your injury? Um, to be honest, I think it's when I stopped taking care of myself. I wasn't brushing my teeth. I wasn't uh, cleaning myself. Wasn't cleaning around me. Um, uh, obviously wasn't working because I couldn't. And I just think when I just wanted to take my own life, really serious. Like I just was like, oh, I'm just gonna end my own life. It just all came into sight. <laughs> was there much support there for you at that stage? I think my my mum's a social worker and she's really busy and my dad he is a very good job too like so they're both really busy and at the time i didn't really want to say to them about mental health issues because i didn't want to you know I, I don't like everything being about me and at the time my sister was away in england so they were worried about her my younger brother was an a level i just didn't want to worry anyone but the reason that because i didn't speak up it caused me one night to have a really bad panic attack and i passed out and woke up in hospital that's when my mom and dad got involved and they started to really they not like notice a difference in you I, I think they did I think my mum definitely commented on my weight because like I don't know if you met me like in the past they like, yeah. was always very fit and stuff always had a bit of weight on me like but I always took my fitness and all serious like done nutrition courses done PT courses years ago and I, I like I would know what to do in the gym yeah. but um, I think when my mum started to see all the weight being gained and like the beard out to here the hair down to there they were kind of like what's going on and yeah that's it but my brother he, since then my wee brothers went on to do mental health nursing in uni because he didn't want anyone to be like me which I'm very proud of him for so you seem to be the type of family that do want to help because you says you don't want anyone to feel like the way you felt when you mm -hmm. were in school and you wanted to be a teacher and then your brother's doing the exact same because the way that you, um, you felt as well do you think you get that there kind of from your mother because oh, she is yeah. a social worker I'm, I'm a dad too like my dad's always been out there for us but my mum obviously I take a big chapter from my mum because my mum went back to uni when she was, I think my mum was 45 and she was saying when she was in, she had to obviously go through tech, then she went into uni, yeah. some really well in uni, then she went on to social work but she always came home very like nervous because there was a lot of younger people obviously and my mum was in her 40s and a mature student but now she's helping, she's helped adults and she's helped children, Class. she's waking up at 3 in the morning doing work, helping kids and yeah, a oh, oh, lot there are mum and dad like. See the one thing about the likes of social work and, and youth work is it's not a nine to five job. You no. you don't switch off as no. soon as you go home. You're <laughs> you're twenty. Because especially when I done youth work in uni myself, there was people in their forties and their fifties now in the class as well. Which mm -hmm. I, the guy the guy thinks class. I think education 
is never finished the day you stop learning is the day you stop living mm -hmm. so you can always improve there's always stuff you can do to better yourself and especially if it's benefiting like others mm -hmm. the way that your brother is doing and then yourself as well mm -hmm. i know what i mean i'd say you're like your art like someone sees a photo of themselves and they're like fuck here someone actually made that for me and yeah i think because like Bottle. obviously like I, a lot of the, like everyone thinks like all these like Bellator fighters and even UFC fighters all think they're like multi-millionaires but a lot of the time the fighters don't have a lot of money like I, get to, I will not name names like there's a lot of big fighters out there that don't make a penny and after like their fees for like the gym and their coaches and stuff and rent they're left with nothing and I just thought well I give them a bit of art they're appreciating of it and yeah. like, I can't believe he's done that for me and do you feel that there that they do appreciate it yeah who would be um, in terms of because we'll move on to it later just in terms of the overall art yep. but um, in terms of the fighters who has kind of like surprised you the most about maybe the re their the reaction uh, yeah yeah like, like a reaction of it all Sinead Kavanagh <laughs> Sinead's <laughs> obviously very big in Dublin yeah. she's a uh, there was photos of her and McGregor and all like he's I think she injured she got injured and McGregor and Coach Cav walked her off the octagon and stuff but um, we went down and met Sinead two months ago was it something like that I couldn't believe her reaction. She was just like, "What's wow. it wasn't?" Yeah, sent me a photo and all like two nights later, but hung up in her, in her house and stuff. She's like, "I am just buzzing over it." She's headlining Bellator this June, oh, which I'll be yeah. ringside for in the three arena, and I can't wait. She's gonna knock your woman out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, have you got much? See, because you're doing this here now, have you got much um, opportunities to go to the likes of these events and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. There's just like um went to Bellator there a few weeks ago but like now there's more like people saying like oh there's cage conflict I think it is cage warriors and obviously there's people talking about going to the FC and all in London but they're now throwing them at you because you're doing all the art for these fighters who yeah. are getting some recognition and stuff now unreal like that's uh -huh. like again it's a wee opportunity out there it's like what you can actually it's stuff that you're actually getting for the work you're doing as well and that well including the money like but you're getting mm -hmm. these opportunities as well to go to these life well not life changing events but I think I mean me and him went the ringside there for Paul Hughes' fight um, two two weeks ago yeah. yeah something like that and I just thought it was an unreal experience and then it was a battle for ringside and I was like this is just class is there an urban like you took Hedges used to get tickets now you get tickets it's just, yeah, just you seem to have the life of it as well he does for 18 <laughs> floating about everywhere uh, so See, um, we'll go back to your injury and, and when you were back here. Yep. See when the dust settled and you actually started to think about, right, what's my next step here? Um, what was the process for you in terms of possibly trying to walk again, trying to get back in the employment and just your life journey? What like, what did you think is the next step for you? Um, well, the first step, I just needed to come to the realisation that I am injured, but there's always someone worse off. Like I haven't lost a leg, yeah. so I had to just make do. So my mom always says, "Yeah, every successful person at the start of the day uh, makes their bed." So that's what I done. <laughs> Made my bed, and I just started to like pick myself up a bit. Would have just had a bit healthier, got a haircut, shower, took care of myself again, and then um, I took the big step of actually reaching out to private medical care to try and walk again. And we got through that, and I just thought, okay, now in terms of a job. Went through like agencies and stuff, put me in a good position, and yeah, just. That's that right. I had that for sure. <laughs> um, where was your first job after all this? Oh, where was it? Oh, child maintenance service. Child maintenance civil service. Back in the civil service. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I made some great mates from there. Like, it, it was good, and like, when I was there, the overtime was just all the time. So Were you on full time contract or was yeah, it yeah, full time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck here, that's that's some good like that's an achievement in itself because mm -hmm. a lot of people will be working in the civil service for years and they're just like they're always on like review and stuff they like got there as well. Fuck mm -hmm. here, that's probably your biggest achievement there. Yeah. Fuck's sake, I got no job just say, there. Like my dad's obviously he's, he's quite helping the civil service, but yeah. like even with his connections, he he couldn't get me anywhere. So I reached out to an agency and it was just it was exactly what I needed and. The fact they were doing so much overtime too, I can make up for lost time. Yeah. And then, yeah. And how long was it until you started to get back to normal in terms of your injury? I think um, it was about three or four months because then I couldn't drive or anything at that stage. My car actually died me, so I had no car. So I had to try and get another car, which I did. But um, it was about three or four months. Yeah. Three or four months. And what was the biggest challenge for you within that, that time? Um, Probably trying to keep 
dark thoughts of like suicide out of my head because anyone I don't know if you've you probably have experienced depression and stuff it will always creep in you when you're less expected so I think I was just the challenge of keeping myself busy every day and no matter how shit a day is just clean up after yourself and just have plans yeah. that I wrote it did you have any specific routine or was there uh, like anything that you'd done uh, yeah try, I think going to going to bed at a certain time really really helped and putting the phone down because like social media could be great and all but there's so much like oh. social media is fake yeah completely yeah. fake and I think just the last time I was on my phone was good and surrounding myself with good people as well same thing that I which I try to do I don't always do it mm -hmm. um, because it, it again it depends how <coughs> my day goes as well um, that I read something that says if you look at your phone last thing before you like go down to go to sleep your mind is still like like stimulating and that's it yeah so um i just try to read 10 pages of a book before mm -hmm. i like i go to bed and then you're a bit drowsy after that or anyway so you end up just like going to sleep straight, like straight away like that's something which i've tried to implement into my life mm -hmm. and i do think a routine especially is is like you need a routine because every successful person in the world has a routine has because yeah. it keeps you in, like in check as well it maintains your standards and it gives you that kind of if you've lost anything or you're a bit unsure of everything you go right here i've got my routine there i can just keep to that there like it'll be grand mm -hmm. for you when you started working again stuff like that there did your maybe routine kind of slip at all because you've got a new focus or did that kind of reinforce your positive mindset yeah no mindset definitely improved like so have you been back to the like football or like anything like are you able to even i've played do anything? I, I i am it's just um if you're doing sharp turns or stuff on a pitch but you're doing 100 times yeah you, you can really feel it impacting the ankle so i've done a couple of charity events and stuff um played five aside things like that um but in terms of like joining back a team no and then as well how would you deal with lingering doubts what do you mean? like yeah. how like how would you deal with doubts even now like even with your art and stuff like that there as well if you have a doubt does that completely take over or do you kind of just fucking knock out the back of the head it, it did i used to like if anyone doubted me or if i doubted myself i would have never tried but now i'm on a very like say yes to everything say yes to everything because you know i, I, I think it was is it kanye west or something saying that that's a random quote i seen the other day he talks about like a ghost and you when you're dying in your deathbed that ghost in your ear will tell you you could have done that yeah you don't want to hear that so i like to think if i just try it and it doesn't work out at least you tried at that <coughs> there stage when you went through all of this here you're back working you've went through your injury you've lost friends along the way how do you think that um you were compared to what you were in school did you think that you'd be in that position of starting to do art again or did you think that you'd never do art again when I was in school, at that stage when I got kicked out, I never thought I left a paintbrush, pencil, canvas, nothing. So to see where I am now is just yeah. mad. And then when the, was it a nurse who brought it into you? Yeah. Yeah. When she started to see it, did she can't, they compliment you at all? She or? did, yeah. So she yeah. let, it was, um, it was in a place called Ferret House in Antrim. It's like a mental health uh, ward, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, but it's, it's like, uh, it's a, just a place for mental health and they do when you get like um out of the hospital you have to do checks every i think mine was every week and when i went down um she brought in the sketchbook and she just left me alone for about a half an hour and get drew a dog or something i don't really draw animals yeah but i drew a dog she was like oh my god she took a, the paint or the page off me and just kept it <laughs> serious yeah Lisa. so it was nice to hear it was like when she said about how good like the drawing was I didn't think it was very good. Yeah. But when she said how good it was, it, I liked that feeling. And I was like, okay, that made me happy. I made someone else happy in the process. Yeah. So, Do you have any of your artwork from school in your house at all? Like no, my mum has it on Facebook though. She does? I try and send you some. Like, she has my GCSE work. Um, no, I have nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Do you ever look back on, say, on the Facebook photos? I do, yeah. And just compare them? Yeah, I do now. Um, I wasn't too bad when I was 16. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. But no, they've obviously improved. Like, I still look at stuff that i done for, um, like, i done Reese McKee, who's in the UFC. i done a painting for him in 2020. It's brutal. It's <laughs> so bad. Like, to compare, even, like, when I painted Paul Hughes, I think it was in 2022, like, to see where I painted Paul for where I am now, it's just, it's up. So it's good to think, it's good to know that I'm improving each and every day as yeah. well. 
and can you see the development of yourself just not in terms of, well not just in terms of art but as a person yeah and what would you say now nah, was the most character like building like moment of your life or experience you've went through I think, I think it was probably the injury in England and losing everything that I ever owned because I had no material items other than my phone like but when you lose everything you kind of just find who you are and being injured for so long and laying in bed I had a lot of time to think because I didn't see anyone didn't see yeah. friends or anything so like would you have not have went out at all no no my, for a long time my friends no I was home to yeah, they tried to get me to go to the Oktoberfest and stuff, and um, I just didn't want to go because, like, that. I'm a bit weird with bars sometimes because I don't drink. Yeah. So there's nothing worse than being sober and being out around people. I never, I never really everyone. experienced it though, like maybe this year, but um, now I'm just kind of like, uh, sometimes bars are a waste of my time. Yeah. I can't hear. I I like to have a conversation, and when you're listening to some cunt in a banjo, you're like, what? Uh, <laughs> where would be your favorite bar to sit in? If, um, if, well if there is any I like I, it's a bit weird I did like the bot because my mates and me would like watch like all the United games yeah. and stuff but um, it's big RE as well like so yeah. you can be spaced out like between and people but they do like a, like a Liverpool fan club as well which is quite good oh do they I'll not go uh, back oh. <laughs> sorry but <laughs> and then as well my wee brother goes there but mm. he's 15 I know that's what I'm Fucking saying it, it, it's, it's weird like it's just I see wing it nose near it and I love hate with the bot, but um, I would like to go with my mates though, because you can actually, I can actually hear them, do you know. Yeah, I'd see the bot as well. Like I haven't been there bot since that FA Cup final. Mm. Fuck, I think it was two thousand twenty two. Like, was it United and City? Was it no? Nah, Liverpool, Chelsea. Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> fuck United. I hate United. No offense to anybody. And United. Anyone else um, United? No. <laughs> nah, no. Liverpool. He's yeah. Liverpool too. He's Liverpool as well. <laughs> I'd watch what you say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but can you um, just describe to us the journey then that led you back into doing art just um, after you started using it as say, a coping mechanism? Um, so yeah, I was just drawn and I, 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 over lockdown, I ordered like, I think it was over 100 canvases because they used to be so cheap and I never used them. When I got injured and came back home, I started to use these canvases and more and more people like family and neighbors were you know noticing them and wanting yeah. to buy them and i was just like okay maybe i could do something here with the art but i never thought i was like there's so many great artists out in belfast i never thought i'd be in anyone's level i didn't think anyone would spend their money on me yeah and my friend jack he was the first ever customer i had he got me to paint a mac miller piece and i wasn't expecting them to pay for it or anything he just yeah. says oh i'm gonna hand you 40 quid and it's like no 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 he says no i'm gonna hand you 40 quid and he's he passed away last year and it still hangs above his bed today so you know that's that's why i kind of keep going on with my art too like because he believed in me so yeah, yeah. how do you because we have all like i'd say all of us have lost like someone to suicide and mm -hmm. um, how did so or just losing a friend in general or losing a family member how do you cope yourself with that there is it because i know some people do feel it an awful lot and some people kind of just fucking put the blinkers on and just try to focus on something else yeah well when i was 19 my best friend cameron took his own life to suicide and i didn't handle it well at all because i i wouldn't be a part of it, like a big group or anything and when cameron passed away i didn't know what to do and i didn't really have people around me i had a girlfriend and stuff at the time yeah but then we obviously broke up and things i like got and i was on my own and i just i just felt very lonely and you know, I, I just, I never told anyone how I was feeling and I bottled the emotion up. So I think people should tell your family and friends how you are feeling and knowing that they're there yeah. for you. But when Jack passed away a few years later, he passed away with a brain aneurysm. And I kind of seen that it was two completely different deaths and I handled Jack's a lot better than Cameron's. Do you think that there is because you're like more mature older yeah a bit more life experience i think seeing like jack wasn't my best friend I, a lot of people would have thought that like you know jack was so close to everyone yeah but he's had a best friend called lewis and mm. lewis a good friend of mine and i kind of seen how lewis was handling things and i just you know seen an old part of myself there because yeah. i lost my best friend in the past but see i definitely matured and stuff and lewis has a fantastic network around him he's a great girlfriend and stuff like so yeah just surround yourself with good people and i, I do see yeah. that i've completely matured from cameron's death do you believe that your circle reflects who you are yeah 
yeah. you, should, you surround with the people that well, I can't remember the quote but you surround yourself with people you want to be like yeah so like if you're surrounded by scumbags you might be a scumbag I don't know but if yeah. you surround yourself with good people who are positive and believe in you you'll do well do you ever look around not even like on your phone because of who follows you and whose number you've got mm-hmm. and you just sit and go fuck me like I'm in contact with this person or I'm in contact with that person do you ever feel yourself just like whoa I do yeah I think um like McGregor and stuff like in my posts and like the side men like viewing my stories and kind of just like can't believe oh, it and some people have dropped me their whatsapp numbers and all it's like Whoa, someone steals my phone there <laughs> <laughs> you know I snickered <laughs> 100% and what would be the um, say the standout moment really for you in- art so far yeah I think um, no offence to any other people have paid the yeah. for like I think I think Luke Littler was pretty cool yeah it's especially his raise within the last say year like. unbelievable like I just just because I, like, I painted him and then six days later I was with him it was just nuts but um because we're with I was with McGregor two weeks ago and we're filming now for things we'll meet him in a few weeks again hopefully that might be the best moment because I've, I've paid the McGregor a thousand times like so oh, pro- no. Luke now but no offence to Luke but I think if I get the McGregor it'll just be a wow moment you know yeah. like a because you know, mm-hmm. I'm more into fighting it's, than I am darts do you know what I mean that's just uh, it like but is there anybody who's who's contacted you for a piece who's actually shocked you and you've went fuck I never thought like just like someone random oh, just someone random like famous wise yeah yeah or just, um, I think Ben Ben Williams probably um, if you know who Ben, yeah. you know who ben uh, is I think like there's been you know, bigger people than Ben but I just thought well Ben wants my art and yeah. I just because Ben was, like obviously blew up with the song and stuff and when he texted me I was like oh that's pretty cool and I don't know why I just I got more of a wow factor off Ben than I got from like maybe Luke I don't yeah. know so I, yeah he, uh, yeah he's got a big following now like, especially at his age what he's doing is when we were with Ben incredible. Ben was in a house in Belfast and we were sitting with Ben and we were sitting talking to him he was like how old are you he was 20 20 like I was like you're 20 I don't know what I was doing when I was 20 <laughs> I wasn't doing what he's doing just sitting there fucking wanking probably I Fuck mean <laughs> having a hand shank but though Ben he's just uh, he's just he's he's um, a master of networking I like hear he ben, seems it like, see, see you and like he was talking to me the connections he has and he was going through his phone with me he was helping me with connections yeah just seeing the people he was even talking to I was like you're not him, long out of school see your other wee lad in New York uh, Carl Carl is his yeah. name but you see you see every video that they have they're with someone new every, each time he's just and ben, just like it's a mad network of well, I was saying like me, obviously me and Ben have two completely di- different you know careers but like he was just saying to me if you have a network go and chase it and see if it happens and you'll meet people along the way and that's how he's got where he is other than you know, he's very talented in what he does but yeah. his network is just unbelievable and he's been doing that there for the last what like two or three years since yeah. like say 17 18 he's stuff. a great shape as well he's, he's a very good boxer it's not just he's not just taking you know anyone anyone can look good in 20 seconds of camera for boxing yeah. but his fighting is is actually good yeah did he fight black patty or something he did Didn't i think he? i think that there was a bit of a mad one the black patty because <laughs> i think anyone in this room could fight black patty but, i know but i see he was in the shankle the other day did you see it ah uh, yeah or in a was it from on a top or limerick top ah uh, he's and then, <laughs> you have to have some balls that he had i think someone gave him there's a photo of him with a drum someone must have uh, the the, the uh, uh, must have given him a fucking drum for some reason I'd be mad if he stole it or something it's, like. it's good though what he's doing like because um, he's breaking down yeah. walls you know what I mean yeah. it's because um, I think they see especially when he came in the yard on so see the videos when he came in the yard on oh Jesus some man just flying down in the fucking um, big jumped off the big goes oh wait bro what's happening that's okay <laughs> and he's going he goes the scrape hard on and he goes hard on the hoods the hoods and the thugs the lads <laughs> these boys make hard on and I'm not joking they're all about 11 just doing it no. well, these boys make hard on yeah, it is good what he's doing but yeah no, like you ben, need to do something for him man you need to do I might do like, I've met him before like he probably won't remember me like but he, he came to Crumlin and Glen Avia and stuff before like got to meet him but he, he just seems to be everywhere oh, he needs yeah. to branch out to like America and stuff and see what happens he's going to Laganil I think this weekend <laughs> so I, I don't know why I laughed he's, no, he's going to Laganil <laughs> this weekend because one of your lads were, and were saying to me that um, he was like oh, Black Fatty's going to Laganil this weekend because his missus is from Laganil I was like, what the fuck's he doing there? And then he goes, <laughs> but he's charging them to make an appearance at a party. Party is? Yeah. For so so he must make some money, like, if people... Yeah. Because he's, he, he, he can't he keep doing that for free, like... Ah, oh, definitely not, like... And then he gets 
free drink. Like someone was saying when he went to the star, he, he went to the star, star. Yeah. yeah, and he asked for a pint, and I was like, oh, Paddy, what's happening? And he, he didn't pay for the pint, <laughs> so he must just go to every bar, just gets a free pint, and fucks off. I mean, he, he promotes you and stuff like that. You know I mean, like, I mean, if if a if one free pint is getting you exposure, you give him as many pints as you want. See, in terms of exposure, what was your first major piece you done that give you exposure? There's two. Um, the first, the first like celebrity or well known person I ever done was Paul Hughes, and Paul just he brought me to his apartment one day and he done it, and I think from Paul put up a post of me and him. I think thirteen people ordered off me in like a week for paintings. Class. And I was just like, oh my god. Was that the first mass kind of order you done? It was, it was the first time I took the leap because like my dad would see Paul maybe twice a week. And I just asked Paul, can I do a painting for him? He's like, what do you mean? And I just paid to Paul, and Paul's like, Jesus Christ, just cheers. He, he actually thought I was like a seven-year-old <laughs> kid coming with a wee drum. I'm here, he said I can do the painting. He's like, all right, come on in. And then, um, yeah, Paul just put it up, and it just, it really helped me. Did you paint them there and then? No, like in, in the room? Yeah. No, 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 I've done, done it beforehand. Oh, yeah. like, it, was, it was him, it was just after he won his belt, and was it Cage Wars? Yeah, it was Cage Wars. Um, just after, was that his first belt? Yeah, I feel like Paul's loads of belts, but um, it was just after he won his belt, so it was just him with his um, you know, tricolor Ireland flag, and I painted it, and he loved it. Yeah, class. I hope he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he loved it. Has he still got it, Jay? Uh, I say I'd, so. I'd, I'd say he probably does. Like, uh, like a lot of the people, like another person as well that blew up was Sean McComb. I'm like shout out to Sean fighting tonight, by the way. Yeah, I shout out Sean. And then when this year's out, this is out in two weeks. Yeah. And then Sean is supposed to be on next already, so hopefully doing that. He does. No rang or say now. Sean uh, needs to kind of live it up here, like hundred uh, percent. But I continue. He, Sean. Yeah. So when Sean, he has the painting in his gym. He owns. He's part of. He's a corner Miss Outfit. Sean has the painting in his gym. So a lot of people who train in Miss Outfit and now came to me and be like, I want one. My son wants one. Blah blah. blah. So exposure there. And at the same time, Sean was training Shane Todd for the comedy fights. Yeah. For the comedian fights. I just said to Sean, can I ask Shane, does he want a painting? He says, yeah. And then within a day, I'd done one for Shane, Paddy McDonald, Colin Gattis. Um, was mentioning Shane's podcast. Good, you know, I would talk to Paddy from time to time. Colin mentioned me in his podcast too. Class. And so, Sean. Must have been a big canvas for like Colin because his hair have you is seen massive. It? Have you seen it? <laughs> his hair is massive. When I met him in Lavery's, um, I went backstage and was talking to like you know the Barlets, yeah. Mickey and Cairn and Will Thompson was there, but Colin was so sick and he was supposed to like uh, do the show that night, but like I don't know what was wrong with him, but he couldn't even go on stage. But Just um, fucked. yeah, but you should jump on that. I know that funny. Remember Dinsey? Yeah. Worked with us, Matthew Dinsmore. Yes. He uh he does comedy now. Does he? Yeah, shout out Dinsey. He, he's doing really yeah, he was always funny though, do you remember him? Fuck me, yeah. He is one of the funniest people I've ever met. Is he in with their crowd? Cause he is, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. I think I think Dinsey and Will Thompson would do a few things together, like, but mate, Dinsey's so funny. Did you see the one do you watch the Whiskey and White yep. podcast? Did you see the one where they're asking uh, Tommy McCarthy and Trone about the I'm comedians, but they're asking if it's like if they're hoods if they're hippies. yes I, I was like I was going to be no uh, but I've seen that yeah yeah and um, they say about like Shane Todd and they're like nah he's like he's like a mixture he is he's isn't a, he he is <laughs> like, he is like a mixture and then like like Kieran Bartlett as well he's kind of a mixture but he is a hippie as well but he's it, it, he uh, is yeah, like a bit yeah. of a hood yeah like not a hood like but like mean. a hood but, but um, boys are funny like when I um, spoke to Shane he was completely di- like I spoke to him for about 20 minutes and he was completely different than I thought like he's just he was I thought he was going to be like you, you always think when you speak to a comedian they're going to be like goofy and blah 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 uh, he was the most straight up dead on person one of the most dead on people I've ever met class so yeah but yeah but Sean and Paul like I, I owe a lot to Sean McComb and Paul Hughes like for blowing me up because they now the fighters are like if I text a fighter they'll be like oh you've done Paul Hughes yeah oh you've yeah. done Sean McComb he's signed yeah so if you can just tell me exactly how life is going at the minute for you good I'm still obviously I still have my 9 to 5 job and I have a part time job alongside it to keep the art going but the art's now coming to the stage where it's making more money than both of them them other two jobs yeah and well, I still need to go and keep them up but uh, yeah it's, it's, it's giving me connections and with connections now maybe 
not definite yet because I need to find out the time. But like we've hit like Canada, United States, um, Amsterdam, and I think Spain. A few places in Spain for people wanting art and to meet them and stuff because they're training over there and it's just it's just going amazing. But where like where have you been? Like where has your art like taken you at this stage? Um, obviously here and then Dublin be a place I go to frequently. Um, but now we're hitting in Liverpool and Manchester. Um, I've been to Amsterdam more than the average person anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of tattoo artists in Amsterdam who yeah. try and get my art. So, uh, we're going over there quite a lot. I'm trying to get a trip there. When was I last there? I think it was in there in November. But I'm going back in. I might go to November this year as well to try and do some artwork because the tattoo artists there seem to love me. So they try and get my art around their shop and stuff, but it's been more of me trying to get the time to actually get over. Yeah. And then um, with plans to go to Toronto and uh, a few places in America too. Unreal. Mm -hmm. Unreal. And who would be the um, the surprise contact you've made if you're allowed to speak about it? like anybody like who's who surprised you that you never thought that fuck here to do it? Yeah, like someone wants this year. We know like some McGregor and stuff like that there, but is there is, is there anyone else out there? That I can speak of it yet? Um, speak of it. Uh, I, I I think the only two probably be uh, Molly and Paddy Pimlet. Uh, Paddy Pimlet would be a good one. Yeah. The, the reason the reason I got to them was they train in next gen MMA in Liverpool. Yeah. And the guy that runs that, they got his contact and said to them, and you know he said to both of them, try and set it up. So I'll be a good surprise one. The other ones I know I've told you. Ah uh, yeah. In thing, but um I don't want to mention them in case uh, it doesn't yeah, fall through because they're, they're they're so it could so fall busy, very yeah. easily like but yeah they probably be the biggest do you think in this game it's it's a lot of word through mouth like oh like, yeah like people just saying i oh, hear he done this or he done that yeah it is yeah and uh, yes yes have to network like mad but um i've now finally learned how networking works do you think you could be a networker yourself now I, I, do you know there's, there's a guy i know he's a, he's a barber in dublin he's doing a, a networking course in liver or all over england and he was saying i sound better than him but i don't believe that anyway like i just like to talk shit and i like to talk <laughs> to people but um yeah, i definitely give it a go like I, I love networking and it's all about who you know at the end of the yeah. day yeah um are you looking forward to this mcgregor oh yeah i can't wait I, th I think when we were down there a few weeks ago and i wasn't planning i just bumped into him and spoke to him for a bit i was like oh i can't wait to get this going and then when manager and all the black forge was like yeah come back here with this art and for them to follow me and to talk to them still yeah. now it's just been I can't wait class because it's like a lot of my art kind of been leading the McGregor too so he knows who I am now because he trains in Crumlin Boxing Gym which I'm delivering an art piece there in a few weeks he trains in SBG where my art as soon as you walk into the doors he sees a picture of himself yeah he's liked all my stuff so like yeah just been leading up that moment so next few weeks hopefully be a defining moment the defining moment <laughs> The pinnacle. The pinnacle, the pinnacle. The peak. Um, and you've done an SBG a few times. What's in there, like, as a, the environment of it all? Oh, it is, yeah. I mean, like, I've been in SBG in Belfast, too. Like, it's just, it's completely different. It's just, when you walk, you've never been, have you? No. When you walk in, it's, it's just like a, you know, a business park. It doesn't look like much outside, but then when you actually walk through the door, it's all, like, McGregor's memorabilia, because he's obviously the biggest fighter from yeah. there. It's all like gloves and all he's worn the UFC all signed and then he's got like stuff from the ultimate fighter and um things in there and it's just like the history of him and coach Kavanaugh how they both like came up from not being that big of a name to the biggest names in MMA have you spoke to him the coach um I spoke to him over Instagram and stuff before Instagram, just... but not in person no he, he, he knows how I'm like but, yeah uh, I, I have no problem or I will speak to him I might yeah. speak to him in a few weeks like <laughs> unreal yeah and what are your hopes and aspirations here for the future like maybe in the next five years or so next yeah I'm currently looking at like units and stuff for like a studio so nice. I would love to be doing the art full time and having more I'm getting a website developed at the moment but there's I don't know if you try to develop a website that takes so long. Uh, a lot of money too, like yeah. to get a good one. I'd say you have enough of that there and I two jobs <laughs> and the, the money man. Oh well you wait and the see, like man. but um yeah, just uh, maybe five years. Well my goal is more ten years, just being realistic, but yeah. to do it full time and to I would love a shop. I would love to have a shop to have like prints and all inside it and I've always wanted to have like I'm really into shoes. Like I, I love sneakers like so I would love to have like shop of like shoes on the wall because i i see yeah. shoes as art 
yeah. as well like Virgil Abloh like I absolutely love him what would be your like favourite pair of shoe right now um, I don't have them the SP Dunk or the SP Dunks what are they the SP Fours the Pine Greens do you know what they are now no are they? gorgeous shoe stunning gorgeous shoe are or, they like limited edition Um, no they're just really hard to get they're like I don't know they, they wouldn't be limited edition would they He's really in the shoes when I'm looking at him. Yeah. Shoes are they're the Powerpuff Guard ones. You ever seen them? No. Nah. They're Powerpuff Guard ones. They're really hard to get. But um, no, probably Travis Scott uh, Jordan ones. Don't know if you know what they are. No. No. Uh, yeah. I seen. Um, was it Giddy or something? Was giving them away or Giddy. something? Oh, yeah, he on. He had the these ones in Mocha, but the ones I'm looking at are like his original, his first shoe. How much are they? Do you? <laughs> Mate, they are like they're like a grand and a bit. Like, do you know what I mean? Like. Um, nah. <laughs> they're just I just love shoes like absolutely love them so what's your worst shoe like what do you think looks ugly I don't think I look, uh, please don't say TNs lad. I'm not TN, TNs I like yours you should come or your shoes like do you know what I mean like I mean I, I like TNs them one. do you know what I mean um, ugly shoes I'm, I'm not a big fan of most new balance new but ba- ah yeah yeah i like 2002 hours if you know what they are but a lot of them are just in, and then you should have worked in jd lad and are you wearing them all, are they the ons are they oh, is it on cloud is that what they, I, I i don't get the hype see on cloud i know i know heard a comfy leg like, yeah and what i heard was on cloud so the shoes are only called on cloud the make is actually on it's on my name but they have like like you don't call the on like sweats on cloud sweats yeah just it, uh, it's just the shoes but they're I think for running shoes they're yeah, that's I mean. oh, they're cool like I just think I hate having the shoes that other people have yeah so like pandas and stuff like but ugly shoes I think pandas are like, every, every, every wee bird has them like they're just I don't know I just I think ugly shoes I some new balance I'm just not a fan of just I like the way you said that sh- shoes are like art as well oh there's the so much so them. much art going to like the method that goes and the technology goes in the shoes is mad I think I would love to design a shoe one day. That's, that's what my next question was going to be. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, even yeah. like Travis Scott and he's like, he is the tech and all reverse backwards and stuff. Like, I don't know if he designed that himself or an artist did, but yeah. you know, someone had the idea of flipping the, the tech. Would you ever be able to, if it is a possibility, because I know who you possibly might have contacts with, like going forward. Are you uh, like ever able to contact the likes of Nick and just say, I've got this design, I'm going to meet someone? Are you able to make this shoe for me and I present it to them? I know some. I'll not say his name. I'll say the after. I know someone that actually works in like Nike HQ, like the, the actual Nike HQ. Yeah. And he does like more of the computer coding and stuff within Nike. But I was, that's my only link. I would love to do it. Like, yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one that throws in an idea for Nike. Yeah. I like they more so. look for like celebrities and stuff because they will sell. Yeah. But no, it, it, you know, I would love to do it. I think it'd be something like it'd be class just like a one-off limited edition shoe like just one pair just and to then do. you give I ah, you give them the someone mm. I think it'd be fucking class like, I would love to like like see uh, Cortez you know Cortez yeah. Cortez obviously yeah. like um, I would love to do something like that you know clothing brand because it's, it's like no one like two years ago this was this wasn't as big that's as it nice is now like, like, am yeah. I like out there Cortez class, yeah. yeah that's the saying I would love to do like you know, was a broken planet stuff like that, like a wee bit of clothing, because you know you need a lot of art and design and on top of that, and there's a lot of thought I have to go into it. But I would love to do something in terms of clothing in the future. Well, we'll have to give you a shout, Nick, because we're mentality big, monsters. We're already, plan, already yeah. ahead of you. I was doing things the other week. <laughs> we're fair planning on it, like um, yeah. just in terms of releasing gym wear and um, hiking adventure wear and stuff like that. There are the kind of likes of fucking North Face and Through Dark and Gym Shark mm-hmm. and that kind of. Because the logo of mentality monsters is sick. Uh, Sick, Matt, like, thank you very much for that there, yes. sir. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. Like, it's have you got stickers of it? No. Oh, uh, yeah. Have yeah. you got stickers? Is there one yeah. on the laptop or anything? No. Uh, there's, there's one there. Yeah. There's one there. But yeah, and you get one. I've stuck them. Um, if you're going through the tolls in Dublin, just have a look. Cause oh, you stuck one, have you? Nah, I haven't. <laughs> Shout out to Rigo. Rigo um, is a lad who I work with, but um, he lives in Dublin but travels up and down till Dundalk. Uh-huh. And he fired a load on the fucking tolls. <laughs> And people have actually said to me about it, like... I take it, your name out there, like, oh, isn't man, it? Oh, man, 100%. There was one day I just went with, like, I think it was about 400 stickers. And see if you go down the Titanic quarter mm-hmm. and you go see <coughs> where the big blue light things are at fucking night. Every single lamppost, see the big silver... Or not silver, it's like the big pillars 
there was like four going down like each 10 meters i just went boom 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 everywhere and people are sending me photos of it now it someone is actually, sick logo look during the break or i checked my phone and someone actually messaged the pager saying um i love your stickers i just saw one and i was just like that's class that's you there so you have to promote yourself in some that's way like on the bit at 11 o'clock and they just bum, 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 so i think i think stuff. i think in like the gym culture mentality uh, monsters will really blow up but if you get that merch out i mean everyone loves merch uh, man, merch 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 hundred percent see us but i see what djk's done i think like he's, yeah he is the prime example of actually putting your head down and putting in the graft and look and and look what he's doing now like, yeah, like when, when we were in the house with like um ben williams and stuff him and carl were there and this guy came in with a mountain it wasn't djk himself but this guy came in with a mountain of gear for Oh, no. Ben and Carl and we were like flicking through and I was like oh that's a, that's a really smart move like yeah, and then 100%. Ben that night was wearing DJK and Sing. what club what club were you in? Uh, honey. honey keep going to him he's like he's like your secretary uh, do you know what I mean like, like, he, he, sure, is. <laughs> he keeps no, sure. he's, he's my boss so he is like. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen um, Ben Williams done a or DJK put up a video of Ben jumping into like a seven seater thing and he had that Belfast like gun club jumper on. Did he? Yeah. 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 So um, fuck here, fair play to him. Then Sean McComb today was or, la- or last night in the way in had the cap on. Like the, the two brothers that own is it represent? Like they got um, Rizzle kicks. They wore yeah. their gear one night in a in a concert, and they blew up from that when Rizzle right. kicks was like the shit. The shit. Ah. Uh, well, um, move on here just to the quick fire questions. Ooh. So we've got a, a few of them just so. Boxing or MMA? Boxing. GA or football? Oh, football. <laughs> football. Except United. You know, who's the funniest person you've met along the way in this journey? In the art? Yeah, just a, I, oh, I, I, the art like who you've met through, through art who would be the funniest. I think Sean McComb. Sean McComb. Or, or Carl Moore. I mean, Carl's really straight up, but I, I think Carl's right. Westy as well, isn't he? Yeah. Carl, yeah. I think, I think he was just so funny too. Like, I, 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 I don't know why, he's just, he could tell a joke and make yeah. you laugh. I like Carl. Uh, like, I actually look forward to meeting Sean because I've of, of heard just mad things, like, and then... Like, Have you never met Sean, though? No? Nah. He's so nice. Paddy, when he was in, and then I've watched all the stuff he's done with Shane Todd and stuff like that there, and I can't wait to meet him. Mm. I, I feel bad that. saying Sean now because I've obviously met all the comedians. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, Sean, but, Sean is a funny like, He like, could be a comedian, I think. Like, Sean? Uh, Sean needs a podcast. Stuff he says. I thought Sean, Sean, you would think Sean would have a podcast. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, who's the maddest person you've met? Oh, Sean. Sean. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Uh, um, maddest? I, I don't I don't know. They haven't really shown me their mad side, you know? Well, I'm trying to think. Who was it that says we asked the funniest person of Matt in boxing and they said Sean, and then the maddest person of Matt in boxing and right. they said Sean and was a putty? Um, I will. We've kind of basically asked this one already, but we'll just ask you. Who, who surprised you the most meeting? I definitely, definitely Sinead. She was just so appreciative of the. I was really nervous meeting Sinead because Sinead is such a, a story, and you know she was she was supposed to fight Leah McCourt um, when Carl was headlining, and Leah I think broke. Did she turn oblique or something? But um, she needed such a big name, and I couldn't believe that her, her reactions was like, yeah. "Oh my god, thank you so much!" And how does that came, make you feel? Proud. Proud. Yeah. Was, like you know, when she paid me and stuff, I was like, "No, I, I, I don't." Because I was doing it for free for her because I was such a fan. Yeah. It's like, no, no, just take the money and stuff. I was like, okay, and it was just just a great experience. She, her connections, obviously, to like McGregor and Coach Cav and stuff, have been absolutely amazing too. Unreal. Um, what would be your death row meal? <laughs> starter, starter, Man. chicken wings, barbecue chicken. Where from? Um, oh, that's a good question. Not wing it, barbecue. Yeah, no, no, like barbecue wings. I like a wee bit of barbecue. Nah, oh, I like buffalo, but nah, more barbecue. Um, Sophia's in Crumlin. Do you ever hear about Sophia's no? in Crumlin? Stan local, oh, love yeah, it. Yeah, Stan local. I, I like their wings. Like, um, main meal. Uh, would you have any sauce? With your wings though? No, just the no, just, just the barbecue just itself. Barbecue like wings. I don't like I'm really plain eater as well. Like like I, I hate cheese. Hate cheese. I, but I can eat a pizza. Does that make sense? No? <laughs> make it make it make sense. Yeah. I don't know how No, I I, just, I couldn't have cheese on its own, but see if it's on pizza, I'll eat pizza. I have a slag for cheese, man. Mm-hmm. 
and I could sit and eat a block of cheese and sweat. Sweat. Load of like grits and all, just be fucking all over it like a rash. I think because it's not served here, but because I've been in America like twenty odd times, Chick Fil A, you ever had it? Uh, is that your main? I say so. Just a big what is it? So it's a plain chicken burger, nothing it's else. Plain. Just checking out, Bob. <laughs> Catch up, probably like catch up, catch up. poke or something like I don't know. Are um, you feeling a bit of adventurous? Yeah, oh, I'm such a plain eater. Like it's such an act. Like, absolutely. Do you like, like wedges or chips? Do you like it? Like what I prefer. Oh, ah, yeah. oh, I think maybe. No, oh, it depends what the wedges are. No, I'll go with chips. Chips. Yeah. Fuck this. <laughs> I love wedges though. Yeah, but I'd probably be with me. It's because I haven't had Chick Fil A in I think, maybe eight years. Like. Even the last time I was in America, I didn't have Chick Fil A. So, you ever had it? No, nah, you'll not go back. It. I'm gonna have. To, you'll not go back. I'm gonna have to go to work. Is then, in free refills and all screw it. It's free refills. Unbelievable. It's like five it's dangerous guys. Dangerous one as well, man. Why? Because free refills, you're just. You're, well, it's you're like five guys in voucher. You're just. Oh, I'm five a, guys at their hole. Like you take out a couple of loans to get a family. Do you know like, where I haven't been in so long, but I actually would like to go to again just because <coughs> last time I tried it, it was like fucking. I think it was about four or five years ago. Cosmos. To see if it's in the cosmos, do you? I've been three times and it's been good twice and it's been shit once. So I just think it's. But we got uh, kicked out of cosmos the last time we were about two years ago and uh, before we went there, got down we robots that serve you your plate. Our mate freaked out. One <laughs> <laughs> kicked out. Got told to leave. I don't. I don't like. I think it's. I think it's Usually, very, when you assault the staff, that's at, that's what you do. That's like. what you do. Yeah. You are too, do too, getting back. <laughs> and then your dessert. Oh. Um, vanilla ice cream on its own. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say Fuck. James Milner. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not really a des- I'm, not, I'm not really a dessert guy to be honest. I sound so plain, like especially an, an artist has to be so like out there. adventurous, man. Do you know what I mean? Like creative and stuff. Man, I, I'm not really into desserts, man. Honestly, yeah. I'm not really big cake or anything. Um, probably would be like a chocolate milkshake or something. Chocolate milkshake. I hear what they got there. It's like a pedo, don't they? Uh-huh. Uh, at me, like, don't they? Come here, kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what's your budget mortar? I'm going to ask you a question. Budget mortar. What's your budget mortar? Ah, uh, bro, I like. Brito Bar in Alley Town and Little yeah, Mexican no, like Deli. Yeah. It's, can I answer Your about Brito? Your mum's friend owns that, doesn't she? Yeah. I'll speak to you after. <laughs> <laughs> can I give you my Brito Bar order? Brito Bar order would be crispy chicken with Mexican rice. You phone in beforehand, do you? Oh, Get man, that crispy chicken. Tr- yeah. Straight in, man. Love it. Uh-huh. Cheese, taco sauce, because that's the one thing that does my head about like bosom. Your sauces are just all the this lads. Mm-hmm. You need to get garlic and shit like that there. Like that's, that's the shit I like. Them two brothers don't own it anymore, I don't think. Well, the guys own the I think they sold it. I hear see down south and all the car big it is in Dublin. It started in Dublin, didn't it? Moved the there as well. Did they? Right. First, first shop in England. Ah, yes, I seen that. I was, at a, I was at a wedding and both of the guys were at our table, actually. Didn't know who they were. They just said they both won't boojums. Yeah. When they started making raps there on the end, did you not question it though? I think I'm what you're saying. I they had peppers, fresh chilies, jalapenos, and then messy wedges because they do messy wedges. Yes, yeah, messy yeah. chips and it's a lot. Yeah. It's more affordable than Bujan. Oh, Brito Bar, like they need to start sponsoring this podcast and uh, get the name out there. Like <laughs> if they wanted to, like I'd, I wouldn't say no to it. Like Hudson's, Hudson's used to give me free pizza. That's mm-hmm. when I, I I done like a fucking big thing. I, I put it on social media. Some wee girl asked me, um, what Hudson's was, and I just fucking went in the full detail. Like I never heard of Hudson's. Is that up here? Yeah, it's North? Kimball. It got best pizza in North. Belfast or in Belfast. Yeah, it's top of Kimball Road, bro. Unbelievable. And it's uh, again, it's very affordable. Like mm-hmm. you can get a family meal lid for like eighteen quid, two twelve inch pizzas, I, garlic bread. I was driving around after the gym. I took a wrong turn. and was like basically in the Holy Lands. Found a pizza hut. Pizza Hut. I swear to God, there's like, Pizza Hut. When was this? Was this recently? Like, yeah, like last week. That's what, Orville? Yeah, like fuck me. You know where we need to go now. Pizza Hut pizza is like. It's the only is it? Away in the is it? Yeah, it's great. There was one beside your house, and then that's fucking it's done. See, it's I haven't seen Pizza Hut in a while. Oh, it's just. Do you know where I love, and it's fucking really, really. This is fucking out there. Apache. See Apache down Apache south. Apache pizza. Yes. Apache down yep. south, man. Apache down south. Sorry, own. Scully, uh, apologies, <laughs> but Apache, Apache man, great, like, fuck me, man. I, I buy pizza lover, like, I'm not a fan of Domino's pizza. It's too, too dear, and it's just, sorry. They're, oh, it is, it is too dear, man, Apache's very dear as well, I think. Yeah, I oh think. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we, when we were down in work <laughs> down south we got a triple decker box yeah uh, there's a few of them in, around there's, 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 there's like two in Lisbon fuck why are you talking about food so much <laughs> more like <I'm, laughs> ah fuck it here someone has to uh, but um, <laughs> we'll go back to the quick go, <laughs> um, for you what is the best piece you have done ever yeah Personally, I think it is Sean McComb again. Like I know I've done, like I've done over four hundred paintings and sold them. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. And um, Sean, I just enjoyed his, but um, there's one that's not released yet um, that I can't show. But I think maybe years ago I did a Michael Jordan piece. Don't know if you ever seen it. It's like it's black. It was yes, the first it's bl- your. What's that photo? Oh, it probably is. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's the first like um, black and white photo I've ever done. Me as his uh, red jersey and stuff yeah. for the Bulls. It was the first time I've ever done a canvas. It was uh, it was like five and a half feet high and four feet across or something like that. I was wondering because in the photo it looks fo- uh, it looks very, very It's massive. Yeah. But I sold 13 of them. They're all in Scotland and Wales as well. None of them were ever here. But they're all that size and it just it worked out so well. But um, I think that probably is, yeah. Unreal. And then your most memorable moment in art so far? Um, I've done a mural in Student Union. I think it was about was it 23 feet wide and stuff i really like doing that but um i, I think maybe luke littler luke i think i was just great because luke's obviously massive yeah yeah and i just thought it was just a great experience but obviously there's so many more people that i can't wait to meet and stuff and yeah but it would probably be luke. things on yeah. the way I, I would say i would say mcgregor but i haven't given mcgregor his art yet yeah and until that day it's it's luke but right. I, I love meeting luke you know and then who is the most famous person in your contacts <laughs> in my contacts yeah. oh tch, i might name have drops i might have to get my phone and look here um it might be luke or it might be i have carl carl Trotten. yeah i have him carl's was potties as well wasn't it? <laughs> i think it was potties yeah uh, I, I no there's a there's a different reason why i have him uh but i have carl's um yeah i have Hope Carl doesn't know I have his or not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's for a reason. Like our family own a meal plan company, and uh, when we used to do like deliveries and stuff, he was on the things. But Plus. I think he's still there. I just don't clear him out and tax him or anything. Like, but so yeah. we'll tax him. I'm the owner. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, bro. Again, that's a quick five questions done. It's, I've actually, I, like, I've really, really enjoyed this year one just because again, it's been like all the other ones have kind of been it's, it's different it is man yeah especially like it's kind of like your man own schoolie um in pizza works great pizza but i do i do like a potty sorry um <laughs> but kind of these year too i went into it because i've known kind of the people that are coming on i could do my research in terms of i can go on the internet and check out their lives where with yourself and own it was just more learning now and um like in the now and it's been a good experience for myself and again this is the first podcast you've done yeah so you know what I mean we're taking I'm, your podcast for generally um, pop my cherry bro yeah you're popping your cherry I've been asked a few like but yeah. have you yeah I, just, oh, I, man, don't, cheers, I don't want to take them on like, I appreciate that uh, and then no, I mean you popped your cherry live on camera the action shot it's 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 been great oh, yeah thanks very much it's nice it's nice opening up about the mental health and stuff and days, obviously it's, losing people and things like yeah that. again because people mightn't um know that art is actually out there or they mightn't have thought they can express themselves through another f- format in terms of art and that's saying, like, hopefully they can, again if it helps one person that one person actually might try art and and give it a shout um with yourself is there anywhere for people that are watching can go and say buy any of your art or see what you've got available or put in orders we'll have a web at the moment it's, it's quite unprofessional at the moment like but at the moment it's just you're just texting me on instagram and i get yeah. back to you and sort of through there but we'll like a shopify and all being set up and i have a guy actually setting up an official website but they take a while yeah um so we're getting them set up in the next i'm uh, hoping the shopify might be out in the next month yes. it's just more you need your stock built up first yeah but uh, up until then it's just you just have to dm me 100% and that's it <laughs> so people you know where to go um, Brar thank you very much for coming on really you. appreciate it cheers bro cheers thank you